The Duchess of Somerset was an influential and formidable figure in 16th century England. Born into the notable Stanhope family, she rose to prominence after marrying Edward Seymour, Earl of Hertford, who later became the Duke of Somerset and Lord Protector during the reign of the young king, Edward VI. As the spouse of a highly influential figure in England, Anne held significant sway within the Tudor court, becoming a central player in the political and social machinations of the era. Known for her strong personality, ambition and determination, Anne was actively involved in her husband's career and the affairs of the state. Her influence extended to matters of religion and the distribution of patronage, earning her both admiration and hostility among her contemporaries. Following her husband's downfall in 1552, Anne faced hardship and imprisonment. Still, she ultimately managed to rebuild her life and regain her properties. So join me now as we take a look at the extraordinary life of Anne Seymour. In the tumultuous tapestry of 16th century England, a woman of unmatched ambition and pride emerged from the shadows, her name etched in the annals of history as Anne Seymour, Duchess of Somerset. Born around 1510 as Anne Stanhope, her life would become an explosive dance between authority and danger as she manoeuvred through the complex landscape of the English court. Anne was the sole offspring of Sir Edward Stanhope and Elizabeth Bouchier. Through her maternal lineage, she could trace her ancestry to Thomas of Woodstock, the youngest son of King Edward III. This noble blood coursing through her veins would serve as the fuel for her unyielding aspirations. In the wake of her father's death, Anne's mother remarried, further weaving a complex web of connections that would define Anne's life. Described as highly intelligent and determined, Anne's snobbery and pride knew no bounds, her arrogance earning her the reputation of being more presumptuous than Lucifer. Yet it would be these very traits that would propel her towards the dazzling heights of power. Anne married Sir Edward Seymour in a fateful union around the 9th of March 1535, a man whose first marriage to Catherine Field was shrouded in mystery and possibly annulled. As the elder brother of Jane Seymour, Henry VIII's third wife, Edward's star was rising and Anne's ambitions would soar alongside him. Upon the birth of their royal nephew, Edward, the couple's status was elevated further, with Edward becoming the Earl of Hertford and later the Duke of Somerset. As Duchess of Somerset, Anne would briefly hold the mantle of one of the most powerful women in England during her husband's tenure as Lord Protector. And in a bold move that would further cement her place in history, she audaciously claimed precedence over the Queen Dowager, Catherine Parr, a testament to her unrelenting ambition. The upheaval of Anne Seymour's existence continued to swirl around her as she stood amidst the English court, witnessing the union of Henry VIII and Catherine Parr on the 12th of July, 1543. As her husband, Edward Seymour, the Duke of Somerset, assumed the role of Lord Protector, Anne seized the opportunity to claim her place as the First Lady of the Realm, challenging the precedence of Catherine Parr. Little did she know that this bold move would set the stage for a fierce rivalry between the two women. Convinced that Catherine Parr had forfeited her rights of precedence and she married the Duke of Somerset's younger brother, Thomas Seymour, Anne refused to bear Catherine's train. She even attempted to physically force her out of her position in court. Anne's audacity knew no bounds. She reportedly declared that if Master Admiral Thomas Seymour teaches wife no better manners, I am she that will. Catherine, in turn, referred to her sister-in-law as that hell. The battle for precedence would ultimately be decided by the Third Succession Act, which placed Catherine ahead of Anne in the pecking order. The Duchess's aggressive nature and fleeting grasp on power would later tarnish her husband's reputation. However, the tides would soon turn against the couple. Edward Seymour was stripped of his power in October 1549, and both himself and Anne were imprisoned in the Tower of London. While the Duchess would secure her release after a short time, 
Her husband would only regain his freedom in January 1550, thanks to Anne's relentless efforts in courting the favour of the new ruler, John Dudley, the Earl of Warwick. Anne and the Countess of Warwick arranged a marriage between their children, Anne Seymour and John Dudley, to further solidify their standing. But fate would once again intervene. Edward Seymour faced charges of conspiring against Warwick, who had become the Duke of Northumberland, and was arrested alongside Anne in October 1551. The couple was returned to the Tower of London, and Anne desperately requested clothes and provisions to sustain them during their confinement. Ultimately, Edward Seymour was convicted of a felony and beheaded on Tower Hill on the 22nd of January 1552. Anne, however, would remain imprisoned until the 30th of May 1553. With Mary I's succession in July and the attainder of the Duke of Northumberland, Anne was finally granted some respite and allowed to choose from the confiscated belongings of the Dudley family. In the swirling chaos of Anne Seymour's life, one constant remained, her unwavering determination to secure her place in the upper echelons of power, even as the tides of fortune rose and fell around her. As the final chapter of Anne Seymour's tumultuous life unfolded, she found solace in her second marriage to Francis Newdigate, a steward to her late husband. He hailed from a well-respected family, with his father John Newdigate of Harefield in Middlesex, yet despite the potential for stability, their life together remained veiled in obscurity, and the storm that had marked Anne's existence seemed to linger in the shadows. When Anne Seymour's journey finally ended, she passed away at Hamworth Palace in Middlesex on the 16th of April, 1587. In a fitting tribute to the indomitable spirit that had propelled her through the trials and tribulations of her life, she was laid to rest in Westminster Abbey. Her tomb adorned with a painted effigy still captures the imagination of those who visit today. Queen Elizabeth ordered an inventory of Anne's jewels and possessions, a testament to her lasting impact on the English court. Among the items was a chain of gold pomander beads adorned with pearl love knots and a red taffeta purse holding two pieces of unicorn horn, suggesting the intriguing and mysterious character of the woman who had once possessed them. As recorded in her will, Anne's final wishes offered a glimpse into the relationships that defined and challenged her throughout her life. This last act encapsulated the essence of a woman who had traversed the dangerous seas of power and aspiration with resolve and bravery, etching an unerasable imprint on the pages of history. Anne Seymour, Duchess of Somerset, remains a significant figure in the study of the Tudor period, illustrating the complexities of navigating politics, power and social expectations for women in an age that was dominated by men. 